out. New York City is both the most populated and the most densely populated city in the U.S., cramming the most people into the smallest comparative space. With a population of 8.5 million people crammed into just over 300 square miles, it's super crowded, super expensive, super loud, and inexplicably super fun. For me, this take is controversial. <laughs> New York has a really good multi-level train system I never use if I can help it because public transit is uncomfortable and there's an entire civilization of subway rats down there I'd rather not disturb. If you don't like whipping through a labyrinthine network of underground tunnels at breakneck speed, you can get a cab instead where you can pay extra for the near-death experience of interacting with New York traffic. Most of New York is on a grid except for the bits where it isn't. If you're going up Manhattan the long way, the blocks are super short but there's 200 of them. If you're going across the short way, the blocks are super long but there's only 15 of them. Feels like this should be the other way around. Right in the center of the island is Central Park, which is way bigger than it feels like it really should be. If you want to get from 80th Street on the west side to 80th Street on the east side, I hope you're prepared for some really circuitous detours because Central Park has no straight lines, possibly as some sort of rebellion against the rest of the city. New York is so dense that the traffic is always awful, but it's also super slow, so not much can actually go wrong, it just takes forever. If you're in a hurry, it's probably better to brave the subway rats or just walk. 7 out of 10, all the trains had these weird occult flyers on them advertising a spiritual consultant, and I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Manhattan has a lot of buildings. Most of them are very tall and skinny because real estate is like $2,000 per square foot, not an exaggeration. Hotels are very expensive and very small, so are apartments, so are proper houses, a million dollar mansion in New York City is about 10 feet across. Being rich in New York is almost pointless because the highest status symbol you could possibly hope for is a regular ass condo anywhere else. I stayed in a hotel that felt like the room was about 75% scaled down from a normal small hotel room and I don't get to feel tall very often but the bed only came up to my knees and that made me feel a special kind of powerful. New York has a bunch of iconic buildings, most of them are best viewed from the outside because despite the flashy facade, the inside is boring office drudgery which feels like a metaphor for something depressing. Central Park isn't a building but it's my favorite thing in New York because it feels like an eldritch location that changes every time I go there. I was wandering around there when the sun went down once and it is a wild experience being able to see recognizable buildings in every direction and having no goddamn idea how to get there. It's also got really big rocks. Good for climbing. Central Park also has the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is great as long as you're not there when every other tourist had the same idea. There's also a public library where the ceilings are painted to look like beautiful cloudy skies, which is something more colleges should try. It'd probably raise morale. 9 out of 10. Save a tourist attraction. Climb a really big rock instead. New York is near the coast, so the local weather is basically whatever the ocean's feeling that day. This isn't really New York's fault, but I was in New York trying to get to Chicago when the polar vortex thing happened and all the trains stopped running, so I was stuck in New York for two days before Amtrak dumped me on the Cardinal Line, which runs for 28 hours through all the ugliest, dullest parts of Virginia, West Virginia, and Kentucky. Country roads is forever ruined for me because I've seen West Virginia and it sucked. Two out of ten. It's not New York's fault, but I'm still salty. Sweet. The best thing about New York is it's so dense. I spent a few days across the street from a kosher cafe with bagels the size of frisbees, one block away from a lovely little tea shop, next door to a fancy steakhouse and three doors down from a bun bakery. I picked a random direction and walked for three minutes before finding a gorgeous breakfast bistro with the best banana and Nutella French toast I've ever had. I went to dinner at a literally underground Japanese bar and introduced a friend to dim sum in Chinatown. 10 out of 10. Look at all these cheesecakes. New Yorkers are hilarious, and I mean this in the best possible way. Everyone thinks New Yorkers are rude because they're blunt, but I'm allergic to subtlety, so I super love it. The truest New York experience imaginable is sharing a bonding moment with a crosswalk full of strangers at 11 p.m. as you watch a cab driver and a bike courier fight in the intersection. I got lost in LaGuardia Airport, and the minute I looked even vaguely confused, a New Yorker zeroed in from across the hallway and yelled, Way trying to go, sweetheart! Ah, gate Charlie 9, you wanna go back that ways a ways and take a left. 11 out of 10. I wish every city worked like this. Overall, I give the city of New York an aggregate score of pretty good. I know it's not for everyone, but I really like it, and it's definitely not like anywhere else. Give it a visit if you like crowds, loud noises, and spending money. Or if you don't. I usually don't like any of those things, but go figure.